Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Pirate News. I'm Brady O'Malley. And I'm Brooke McCormick. On today's bro broadcast, we will be bringing you news from around campus and across the country. We will also bring you your Seton Hall sports update and your five-day weather forecast. SHU Libraries kicked off their third annual Love Data Week yesterday on both the South Orange and Nutley campuses. Events will be held throughout this week to showcase the data services and subscriptions available to the Seton Hall community. Programs focused on things like managing your online presence will also be held. Love Data Week is from Monday, February 10th to Thursday, February 13th, so attend as many of these free events as you can. The Board of Regents recently improved funding to renovate the television studio. The improved studio will have HD and live streaming capabilities. Students will also be able to live stream the news. The new studio is expected to help all students, especially visual and sound media majors, learn state-of-the-art equipment, giving them knowledge that they can take to internships and careers. The renovations are supposed to occur over the summer and be done by next fall. Love is in the air at the IHS campus. Although Valentine's Day is not until Friday, the students at the IHS campus are starting their celebration early as there are fun events being held by the Department of Student Life to get them into the spirit. These events include making your own Valentine's Day plush and creating Valentines. If you're on the IHS campus, take advantage of these events and have some Valentine's Day themed fun. The U.S. News and World Report recognized Seton Hall as having one of the top online graduate nursing programs in the country. Seton Hall is ranked 17th in the nation, making it top in New Jersey and third among Catholic schools. Seton Hall's nursing program educates one-third of nurses in New Jersey and is one of the few nursing schools in the country that is approved for ROTC nursing candidates. Congrats to the nursing school on this great achievement. Now we'll head over to Ronnie DeRace with your Seton Hall sports update. Ronnie? Thanks, Brooke. Hello, Pirate Sports fans. I'm Ronnie Jerez here with your Seton Hall sports update. The number 10 Seton Hall men's basketball team limited number 15 Villanova to just 36% shooting, while the final score was 70-64 to Saturday afternoon in front of 20,000 fans at Wells Fargo Center as the Pirates toppled the Wildcats on their home floor for the first time since 1994. Powell, who became Seton Hall's all-time leader in three-pointers made, was solid as usual with 19 points on time for 16 shooting. Sandro Mamakalic really had a breakout performance in just his fourth game back after missing seven weeks due to a wrist injury with 17 points on seven for 15 shooting while snagging eight rebounds and two blocks. The challenges continue as Seton Hall will next be tested by a great Crane team on Wednesday, February 12th at Prudential. Game is 6.30 p.m. on FS1. On the women's side, the Seton Hall women's basketball team fell late to number 14 DePaul, 86-76 in front of a packed house in historic Wash Gymnasium on Sunday. Freshman Maya Jackson scored 19 points on the strength of three three-pointers to go with three rebounds, three assists, and two steals. Senior Shadim Samuel, Sam, Samuels finished with 18 points on an efficient 6-for-8 shooting to go with five rebounds, four assists, and a team I three steals. The difference in the game, although, was DePaul's Shantae Stonewall, dropping 29 points with three threes and 10 rebounds. Seen Hall will return back into action on Friday, February 14th, to travel against Providence. The Seen Hall softball team split the first day of the Elon Softball Classic in North Carolina on Saturday to open up their 2020 season. In the first game of the doubleheader, the Pirates grabbed the lead early and rallied late, but just came up just short against the Longwood Lancers with the final score of 7-5. Later that day, the Pirates played the Elon Phoenix, and they erupted for 17 runs in the second game after the afternoon, picking up their first win of the season. The Lady Pirates played another doubleheader on Sunday against the University of Rhode Island Rams twice and splitting both those games. The first game finished in a close 2-1 final score, while the second game ended in a 7-2 Seton Hall win. And that's all for your Seton Hall Sports Update. Once again, I'm Ronnie Jerez. Now back to Brady and Brooke with more of the news you need to know. Thanks, Ronnie. A new piece of legislation was passed to help students with disabilities who are trying to seek higher education. In May 2018, Horizon NJ Health cut personal care aid, causing students with disabilities to not be able to live at college. Currently, Medicaid covers the cost of a personal care assistant for 40 hours a week, which is not enough for a student not living with family. The new legislation increases that number, making it easier for students with disabilities to live at school. On the night of Sunday, February 9th, New Jersey residents living in Monmouth County to Cape May County were able to, see, to witness a NASA rocket launch. NASA launched a Northrop Grumman Antares rocket from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The rocket was launched to send a cargo ship of supplies and equipment to the International Space Station orbiting Earth. 
South Jersey residents were able to see the launch within a minute to three minutes of liftoff. Now we will go to Jalen Smith with your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Jalen? Thanks, Brady. And hello, Pirates. Jalen Smith here with your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Today we will have a rainy day with a high of 49 and a low of 34 degrees. Tomorrow will improve as we will have more mostly cloudy conditions to go along with the high of 45 and a low of 37. Thursday will be our warmest day and coldest night. It'll be a rainy day with a high of 56 and low of 28. On Friday, the day of love, we will transition to partly cloudy skies with a high of 34 and a low of 12 degrees. And finally, on Saturday, the weekend will start off with sunny yet cold conditions with a high of 34 and a low of 25. That's going to do it for your five-day weather forecast. Once again, I'm Jalen Smith, and now back to Brady and Brooke with your latest news around the country. Thanks, Jalen. CEO of the global investment company PIMCO, Douglas Hodge, has been sentenced to nine months in prison. Last month, 50 people were charged for fraud involving cheating on standardized tests and or lying about athletic achievements. In Hodge's case, he bribed college coaches so his children could make elite teams. He paid 850 grand to help his four children get into school at the University of Southern California and Georgetown University. Prosecutors said he also tried to use bribes so his fifth child could attend Loyola Marymount University. He did not succeed, obviously. Royal Caribbean, as of February 7th, has barred all Chinese, Hong Kong, and Macau pa passport holders from boarding its ships due to concerns over the coronavirus. This applies to the passport holders regardless of when the person was last in their home regions. Also, regardless of nationality, any guest or crew member who has traveled to mainland China, Hong Kong, or Macau, or been in contact with anyone who has less than 15 days before boarding, will not be allowed on the ship. Royal Caribbean will also screen any guests prior to boarding who are unsure if they have had contact with anyone who traveled to those regions or who report feeling ill or show flu-like sy symptoms. That will do it for today's episode of Pirate News. I'm Brady O'Malley. And I'm Brooke McCormick. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.